Welcome to the Atai Community Family Resource Centre. I'm here to show you how to cook some easy, cheap and delicious meals. My name is Mary Gruffity Flood and this course is called Down to Earth Cooking with Me. Now, I'm going to cook for you four chicken breasts, okay? I put clean film on my board here for, to save me having to clean it, okay, before I use anything else. So there's one, two, three, four, okay, put that over there. Now I'm going to put a different filling in each one, okay. Now these are very large breasts. I'm going to explain to you how you know whether you're getting good value when you buy chicken breasts because breasts can vary in size. It can be very small or very large, okay? And you, you say, say there's a special offer, four chicken breasts for three euro. But if they're small chicken breasts, you're not getting good value. So you need to ask how much are the a kg? That's how you know whether you're getting good value or not, all right? So they'll have a special price per kg, all right? So I'm going to split these chicken breasts and I won't go the whole way through. I'm just going to make a pocket, okay? And this knife is so sharp, I'm nearly, it would nearly take your breath away. So I'm minding my fingers very well. So just make an indent for whatever I'm going to put into it. So I'm going to put four fillings. I'm going to put a slice of cooked ham in one. I'm going to put mozzarella cheese and sun-dried tomato in two. In number three, I'm going to put white pudding. There's a slice of white pudding. And the other one, I'm going to put black pudding. And I'm going to wrap them all in bacon. Okay? So, Right, so I'm going to cut that like that, so that it fits into the little pocket. Okay, so this is our first. Now put it in this way because the shape of the breast lends itself to do that. Okay, like a half moon. So that's two. And then this is a nice piece of cooked ham here. That's three. And then the last one, I'm going to put two or three mozzarella balls, right? And a few, three pieces of sun-dried tomato. Now I have to say, this one would be my favorite, okay? So, I'm going to put, this is a nice piece of bacon. So, right, that's number one. I'm going to cook them on this dish here. And I have the oven on at 180 and it'll take about half an hour to cook these okay it's all lean meat so there's no bone okay there's number three and whatever fluid comes out of these from the bacon I will make a gravy out of the juice okay now you see this I'll just lift up this and put it in the bin and you've no cleaning, you can use your vegetables then straight up after doing that. Now because I've used meat, I'm going to wash my hands, all right? Now, I have not got tin foil with me today, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the butter and wrap it up in the tin film in a piece. Okay, and I'm going to use the butter paper to go on top so that it doesn't burn while it's being cooked. See the way that covers up nicely. Okay, so you can use stuff you have in your home, you don't have to be going out and buying the, the certain thing. Okay, so that'll take about 20, 30 minutes to cook. All right, I'll pop it in the oven. Now, I'm going to 
complete the roast chicken, the four portions of chicken that I've already put in the oven. So we have carrot, uh, cauliflower and broccoli. And the carrots are cut in a style called julienne, matchstick types. The, um, julienne was a chef in France who was real slim and he used to cut the vegetables and he got the name julienne carrot. So if you ever see julienne on a rest, uh, in a restaurant, you know they're going to be really pencil thin or matchstick thin. So I have a saucepan here with some water off the potatoes which I've just boiled. Uh, I'm going to add the carrots on the bottom and then I'm going to sit the cauliflower and the broccoli and these will take about five to six minutes to cook, that's all. Okay, so I'll just pop these in I have, and put a lid on okay, and I will, that is perfect. Now, these are my potatoes, which I've cooked, and I have the thyme, I'll take out the thyme. Now there's a small amount of fluid, so I'm going to strain off that fluid off those. This is going to make the gravy for the chicken, okay? So I'm going to season this with a little bit of salt and pepper, okay? And I can put a little knob of butter, I see it here. Right, so there's our potato. Now we're going to mash these. We can find a mash I have a mash Okay, so. So when you get them to a stage, you'll be able to cream them. Swirl them around the pot. Okay. And make sure they're well creamed up. Well, that looks really good. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the chicken out of the oven and I'm going to pour the fluid into this saucepan to make the gravy. Okay? Bring it over. Okay. Now, this is our chicken. Okay, so now you see all the lovely fluid there. Now I'm going to just sit the chicken here on that. And here I have um, gravy granules from Aldi again. So for that amount of fluid, I'm going to put tea, two teaspoons. It can be gravy, you could make soy, soy sauce and cornflour, that would do as a thickener as well, okay? And I'll just put a small drop of cold water in that, just to blend it. And then I'll transfer it to the hot fluid and I will bring it to the boil. And that's all I need to do, just reach out to the cup. So I'm just going to heat this now and the vegetables should be cooked there, okay? Yeah, they're boiling, and I'm just going to thicken the gravy. So just stir it till the heat builds up. It takes about four or five minutes. And there's the veg boiling. It takes very little time when they're all the same uh, thickness, okay? So just stir it. I won't add any salt or pepper because there was salt and pepper in the water that were cooked in. Okay? So I'd say it'd be salty enough. So this won't take long at all. So I'll just stand here till I see the first bubble or two. And that would be enough to pour over the chicken. Ready to cook. 
So okay, these are just chain, cauliflower, and broccoli. Okay? And again, this is very cheap dinner. It carrots are nearly cooked. Okay? Uh, this dinner is probably about seven or eight euro for four people, which is very economical. So it's well worth doing and you could soak the chicken in advance and have it in the fridge and just take it out and pop it in the oven. Um, and, and it's well worth doing in advance. Okay? Now you could also make stuffing, ordinary stuff and bread, sausage meat stuffing, whatever you feel like eating it as regards to stuffing will be acceptable. Okay? You could put onion in it, anything like that. So I'm going to swap rings here because this one is quicker than the other. So it has to bring it to the boil because that will cook out when it's just ready. And by eating a portion of chicken, you've no cutting on it. The person that's going to eat it can um, just cook it as they require it. Okay? So that's it. And then it's just ready, I would say. Yeah, broccoli is ready. That's perfect. Okay, so we we'll bring it across here and assemble it just to show you. Okay, so we we'll plate up one portion for you, just to give you an idea. Okay, I'm going to clean plate here, and here we are. Okay, so nice mashed potato. Chicken portion. That's the mozzarella and the sun-dried tomato one. Okay. And I will serve this with some broccoli. Okay, two pieces of broccoli, carrot, and a piece of cauliflower. Okay. And then I will just drizzle the meat with the gravy. Now, doesn't that look very appetising? And you'll really enjoy. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Now, the, the, this dish I'm going to do for you is a traditional apple crumble. And apples are in season in a big way at the moment. There's plenty of them about. Now, this is this apple is a variety called Bramley, okay? So I have two apples here. This is the dish I'm going to cook the dish in. And again, this is for four people, okay? Now I brought in this one specifically because half of it is bruised. So that would have fallen off the tree and got banged, which is not edible. But I'm brought in to show you that there's, there could be a bit on it that is usable, which there is. Okay, so don't just dump it if there's a small bit of a bruise on it. It's all usable. Okay, we have to try and utilize everything we have. Okay, so that's a small piece. I know I didn't get too much off it, but it was worth doing it in my opinion because we waste far too much food for my liking. Okay, now peel an apple really thinly. You can use a potato peeler if you wish, but nice and thinly, and keep going around, follow the apple the whole way around, okay? So there's one fine big apple, right? This is my dish, and I'm going to grate the apple here, go here. Now this is, if you're in a hurry, uh, you could stew them, uh, you could slice them, but I'm going to grate them, okay? So there's I'm going to layer the base of this dish, and this is the one that I sliced up. I had the bang, the bruise on it. See how thinly I'm cutting this? Just to show you a variety of ways of doing it. So I always keep um, this in the fridge, the apples. Or I, what I do at this time of year is I slice them and I put a little dusting of sugar on them and put them in the freezer about the quantity you'd need for an apple tart. And oh, it's so handy during the winter then. 
and you're using up the fruit at the minute. And we keep hens and hens eat the peels. So nothing gets wasted, okay? So there's our layer of apple, okay? Now I'm going to flavor it with cinnamon. Decent coating of cinnamon. So that's our basis. Now I'm not going to put too much sugar in it because I'm going to make a topping that has sugar in it. Now this happens to be brown sugar. It can be any type of sugar you want, okay? So there's as much as the sugar as I'm putting in it, handful, okay? Now, I'm going to put this in my waste bag here for the, the chucks, okay? Now, so there's our apple, and this is the bowl I'm going to make the crumble in, okay? So we're going to start off with a handful of porridge, okay? Two handfuls of plain flour, okay? And one good big handful of flaked almonds. Now that does two things, that gives real nuttiness to it, okay? And then, this is where I'm going to put sugar in, okay? About that much. And the brown sugar is lovely on top. Okay, so that's the mixture. Okay, and then to that, I'm going to grate some butter. Now I could rub the butter into it, but grating it saves your arm and it goes through a lot quicker. Okay, so I'm going to just rub this in. And you just need enough that every piece of flour that you, you can feel the butter in it. And this will be lovely and juicy with the apples in it. Okay? So that's the topping. That's apple crumble. Now I'm going to put this in the oven about 180 for about 20 minutes. Okay, and just pour it on like that. Now that is really simple. And if you had vanilla ice cream out of Lidl or Aldi, or custard will go beautifully with this. Okay, so now we'll pop it in the oven. One eighty, 20 minutes. Right, okay, thank you. I'm going to take out the apple crumble. It's been in for about 25 minutes. So it should be ready. It certainly smells very nice. Oh yeah, lovely and golden. The almonds are nicely toasted. Vanilla ice cream or homemade custard. Delicious. And now, and this is the end of this, this session. Down to earth cooking with me. Um, I hope that you have got some tips and that you will make good use of them and I have really enjoyed myself and if you send in a good response they might bring me back for another one. Thank you, bye bye.